What is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. It's actually kind of sprinkling out so hopefully I don't get rained out but uh, we're actually filming this episode thanks to those on Facebook that chimed in when we asked them, hey what would you like to see? Some content or topics or things that you might have questions on and uh, man Facebook just blew up. We had so many different requests so we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of videos this coming week on all these topics because uh, this time of year we don't have a whole lot of content to continue going daily without your help. So if you'd like us to continue going daily and it's been a value to you, it's a definitely a two-way street where it's important that you let us know kind of what you're struggling with, topics, you, topics you'd like to see, questions you have, things like that, and I'd be glad to answer them. We read all of our comments uh, on both Facebook and YouTube and, and even Twitter and Instagram. So we're on there all the time, fueling questions, helping gardeners grow big or go home, and I do hope that you will chime in as well, because there's no such thing as a dumb question, and I really do hope that that uh, has has been made very, very clear. If you have uh, if you have a question, there's probably 10 other people that have the same question and I love doing videos on questions uh, that, that you have because it lets me know that I'm at least helping one person and that's our mission with every single uh, bit of you know content we put out. So uh, with that out of the way, I want you to uh, first let us know, do you love that we're going daily or have been going daily? Have you found value in it? Uh, this is the time of year I really wanna feel that for next year. Um, we can't go daily. I mean, I'm gonna go daily as long as I can, but at some point, the the quality of content uh, will not be there, and so I have to spread out the, the good quality content that I do have across a week. So that's usually where we get like Monday and Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if we have uh, some extra content laying around that's really good and solid information. Uh, but I'm not just gonna put out a video just to put out a video. I'm not about that. I've never been about that. And I wanna help gardeners at the core of what we do every single time. And I want it to be fun, engaging, and uh, you know, and exciting. So the topic of today's video is why have we been planting, or why did we plant our, our fruit, our, I guess our fruit bushes in black containers and why haven't we transplanted them yet? Uh, this was actually a question that came up from Michael. So Michael, thank you so much uh, for your question. And, uh, and I really do appreciate it. Um, it's been a question that has kind of come up quite a few times, so I'm, I'm glad it actually came up to, to chime my memory to talk about it. So um, the reason why we keep our, our, our plants in containers uh, when, they're, um, you know, when they're young is because throwing them out directly into the ground is a big mistake. It's a mistake that we've made in the past. It's a mistake that we actually made this spring that I'll show you all. Uh, you know, we still make these mistakes and um, it's something that does happen. So the reason why you don't wanna just throw them right out into the ground if they're small, which these were small, we bought them when they were only about four to six inches tall because it saved us money rather than buying fully mature plants. Uh, so we bought small plants and threw them in here, um, but had we thrown them in the ground, they wouldn't have survived. And the reason is because the when you get plants, oftentimes they're bare root, especially if you buy them online. Um, the, uh, the USDA makes um, people that are selling plants a lot of times if they don't have the right certifications, it's easier to wash off all the soil to make sure there's no pests or funguses or um, invasive species and things like that. So they wash it all off, making sure that it's very sterile and then they can mail it to you across state lines. And that's a great way that a lot of, um, that a lot of online plant, uh, plant dealers kind of get around the, all, those, uh, all those different hassles with certifications and paperwork and stuff. So we went that route and we did buy some, some unique, cool varieties. We got some, uh, some purple raspberries, some yellow raspberries, uh, some, um, some Marion berries. We, bought, we have uh, some, um, some currants, some gooseberries, and things like that that are really hard to find locally. And so we did get them small. And uh, when, you get, when you get small plants, you just can't throw them out in the ground. The conditions are far too inhospitable. You have uh, pH differences. You have uh, temperature differences. You have um, uh, soil moisture that's, uh, you know, rain and, and uh, different watering schedules and things like that that are far different, even nutrient deficiencies. Everything is, uh, is out of whack when you throw it right into the soil because they're grown somewhere else. And when they're thrown into another, uh, another, cl another climate or growing zone, um, especially after they've had their roots chopped off and washed off, they're under a ton of stress. And so they need the most ideal situation, or they need the most ideal conditions possible to ensure success. So all we do is we throw them in a really good potting mix and make sure that the nutrients are there, make sure that they get watered regularly, and that way we can, we can 
better help them succeed. And we won't just do it uh, you know, to get them started, we'll actually leave them in there an entire year. So they will overwinter in these black pots. And I'll tell you why. Another big mistake that gardeners make when they want to plant something out is they plant it out when it's already growing. That is one of the biggest mistakes you can possibly make when you're planting perennials. These being perennials, they will overwinter and, um, and they'll grow back in the spring. So when you're planting perennials, they need to be dormant or at least almost coming out of dormancy. If they are fully growing and they have foliage and leaves, they're going to go through way, way, way too much stress, folks. And I can't tell you how often I see it that someone just takes a full grown plant, throws it in the ground. It goes through a ton of stress. It goes through a ton of shock. It usually will drop a lot of leaves and then that lets in disease and pests. And that usually sets the plant back a long ways. It not only sets back fruiting, but you might even lose the plant. In a lot of cases, we've, we've lost plants and, uh, and killed them doing that. So we've learned from our ways and, uh, and finally found a way that really works. And that is to never, ever, ever transplant a plant that is growing only when it's dormant. So either late this fall, um, if the ground is still unthawed and we can, uh, it's still um, workable, we'll plant the plants, or in the spring, once the, once the ground has thawed out and, and is ready to be worked, we can plant them in the spring when the plants are still dormant. And that way they're not going through nearly as much stress. Um, and the plants are much more uh, robust. The root systems, which is the biggest thing, is much more developed and is ready to handle some of those stresses that, that can be thrown its way. Uh, and um, and it just gives it a much better fighting chance. So uh, let's go ahead over to um, one of the plants that we did not really, uh, I don't know what I was thinking when I threw it in, honestly, but I'll own it. I Even me, I make mistakes at times. Uh, we threw it in when it was far too immature and it just did not stand a chance. So let's go check it out. So with our brambles here, the raspberries and blackberries, you probably saw the growing guides on them. One of the things that I did not take into, into account is how immature the blackberries were when I planted them. The raspberries, as you can see, are doing great. They're exploding, they're doing so awesome. But that's because we like to make a practice that if it's any, if it's any smaller than a pencil, the diameter of a pencil, you know, a regular, you know, uh, I don't know what you call them, like a, a type A pencil or a type two pencil or um, the, the regular school pencils, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> the, the school pencils that you get, if the, you take the diameter of that and it's any less, we'll keep it in black pots for a year. If it's any greater than that, it's okay to plant it outside because usually what will happen is if it's any greater than that, the person selling the, the bare root plant will take up a lot more of the root system because the root system usually is proportionate to the diameter or the, you know, what the plant, the diameter of the plant or what the plant can sustain above ground. And so if, as long as those two are proportionate, you do have a fighting chance. However, a lot of times with smaller diameter uh, plants, the first year or, or even less than first year young seedlings, they don't have that, they don't have that ratio developed because they have not been growing long enough to develop a really good root system. And so oftentimes it'll put a lot of its energy in growing rather than forming roots. Whereas like a two year old plant, it's already done that. So it's already, it's already put down the roots and has already sustained the growth up top. So that balance has been maintained. And that's where you can throw it right in the ground. That's like the, that's the raspberries. However, what I didn't do is I did not take into account that uh, these were seedlings. They were about eight month old blackberry canes that we threw, they were dormant, uh, eight month old blackberry canes, threw them in the ground and that's when uh, we had some issues. So check it out. Let's go check out what's going on. So. Here's the healthiest of the blackberry plants, and it's still, I would not consider healthy whatsoever. Uh, they're really, really struggling. Here's this one here. These have hardly grown at all. They've been so stressed and so stunted. And this one here, uh, I just wanted to see if there was any green left. I pulled it out and it was basically like that. Um, and I just wanted to see if there was anything left that was going to maybe possibly come back. I don't even know what I was, what I was hoping for. It's been dead all year, but um, yeah, it's deader than, it's, it's, it's very, very dead, very brittle. So that's not coming back, but you can see, look at the diameter, look at the diameter of this. I don't know what I was thinking when I planted this out. That is far too spindly, far too spindly. And the root system was far inferior. It was just not developed enough. Same thing with this. I mean, you can check this out. Look at this. Look how, look how spindly this is. This is not a well-developed cane. I'm not ready to go outside yet. 
And same thing with this. You can just see, look how, look how spindly this is. I mean, I'm even, I'm even shocked that it survived, to be honest. And I do not think it's gonna survive the winter, so I might have to replant these in the spring. That's just a mistake that I made. Now compare that to our raspberries, which are thriving. In fact, we've actually gotten about a quart of raspberries from these three plants already, because they were two-year canes. They were ready to go in the ground. They had the, the root system to justify the growth up top. And, uh, and it could survive some of the stressors that were thrown at it, throwing it in, in ground that might not be ideal. You can see, I mean, look at look at all the fruiting spots here where they've gotten fruit. I mean, it's just been loaded up. But you can see, I mean, just the, even the, the robustness of the plant tells you something. And this was a bare root plant, exact same bare root plant that those were. So nothing is different. It was actually the same seller as well. So uh, it's not like we had quality differences. They were exactly the same. The difference was this was two years old and these were eight months old. Huge difference. So, and you can tell here too, look at the thickness of that stem. Look at the thickness of this cane here. That is, a, that's thicker than a pencil. And then over here, you can see the same thing. Same thing. Look how nice and thick those are. Really nice and thick. So there you go, I do hope that helped. Um, it's starting to rain quite a bit harder, so I gotta cut this short here, but I hope that helped. I hope that um, at least helped you understand kind of what we look for. So again, I'll kind of reiterate, if it's less than a diameter of a pencil, they'll go in the black pots and they'll stay there and they'll mature and they'll get healthy because I can better regulate their, their moisture, uh, their you know the, the soil aeration, soil nutrients and things like that. I could better regulate that in a container than I can in the ground. Um, and so that's why it's just so much better to throw them in a pot for a year. And you really are going to, you're going to have far better results in the end. So I do hope that you try this. Um, and you do not have to worry either about leaving these in the containers. They will be fine. Nurseries leave their plants in the containers over winter. They do fine as well. You don't have to worry. Uh, as long as they're really cold hardy like these currants, blackberries, raspberries, things like that, they can tolerate zero, negative five, even negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and they will survive. So uh, anyways, it's raining super hard. I gotta get out of the rain before the camera gets ruined. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all later. See ya, bye.